Hello everybody, it's SD Medhaven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the Agula, also known as the Hawk 30. This is a German Tier 8 Premium Light Tank that was introduced in the game about a year ago, or maybe 8 or 9 months ago. Uh, anyways, it holds up extremely well inside the matchmaking. It reminds me of a Leopard 1, just with the downgraded gun at Tier 8. Now, the Agula is actually the tank that made me want to get the Leopard 1. So, you know, I spent a few weeks ago grind one out just because I wanted to try it out and see how it was as a tier 10 variant. And to be honest, I love them both. So, first things first, let's go ahead and jump right into the engine. 800 horsepower overall. You have 28.57 power to weight ratio, which honestly, massive. This thing is just gets up and go. Top speed of 70, uh, top reverse speed of 24. Extremely maneuverable. Especially that reverse speed of 24. If you're reversing down a hill, uh, you'll hit like 31. Or if you're going downhill, uh, I've seen this thing hit like 80. And I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a bigger tank. It it doesn't mean that it's going to be hard to hit you. This thing is comparable to most mediums in size comparison. Now, the gun on this with the 7.4 second reload as the base reload. 2.10 aim time. That aim time is really fast. And gun dispersion on this at 0.36 is not too bad. You can take some nice snapshots. But keep in mind, vertical stabilizers will be your best friend inside this tank. Uh, DPM. I'm not a real fan of getting DPM out inside my light tanks. Just because you're, you're going in for the assist. You're going in for spotting. Or you're going in for support. Uh, sometimes DPM can be really beneficial. But... Inside this tank, I prefer accuracy over getting out rounds and watching them dirt. Now, 18 degrees of max elevation. Yeah, you know, elevation, that, that's nice and up there. You know, just allows you to be mobile. Um, let's say you're driving downhill trying to take a snapshot. That 18 degrees instead of a light tank is just really nice to have. Uh, max gun depression at 10 degrees. You can work ridge lines inside this. It is just extremely aggressive. The gun itself is fantastic. Your standard rounds are APCR. They have 187 millimeters of pin, and that's really high, especially on a light tank. Now, your premium rounds, they are heat. So keep in mind, whenever you're firing heat to avoid shooting um, obstacles in between you and the target, because heat rounds are not like APCR, AP rounds, they will stop instantly on contact to, let's say, a single piece of concrete or like uh, a house. Sometimes AP rounds will just go through fences. Heat rounds will just stop. Now the tracks on this, 50 degrees of rotational speed. And then your your resistance overall. Your resistance on this, 0.6 on hard, 0.7 on medium, 1.2 on soft. You don't notice any difference no matter where you're driving. None. Jumping over to the turret here, the 410 meters of view range is probably the biggest advantage to the Agel and the Hawk 30. Just because that 410, you're outmatching a very good amount of tier 9s and some tier 10s. Now, concealment on this tank at 0.27 is, it's not the highest in the light tank category. It's more of a middle ground. So... The advantage you have, though, is that, let's say, you compare this to, like, the LT-432. Um, that light tank only has 380 meters of view range, so you have that extra 30. And stacking on coated optics, premium consumables, and everything else, you're going to be boosting it a lot. And it's going to be really hard to spot you out. Most of the time, you're going to spot people before they ever see you. So, fantastic. Uh, signal range in this, 745. Assist damage, we will jump in at a later date after all the uh, perk reworks and the new maps to come out. So, I'm extremely excited to be able to do camouflage, spotting, and everything else and going over those mechanics. But they are just so hard to explain that it's literally going to take a whole different video. The ammunition inside this, as I said, your standard rounds are APCR with 1,080 meters per second. Your heat rounds, they travel faster than the APCR, but APCR is standards, still really nice. So the heat rounds in this actually have 250 millimeters of armor pin. They are fantastic. I mean, for a light tank to have 250 millimeters of premium pin, uh, just running around the map, and you can be extremely aggressive. 
Your high explosives actually have 102 millimeters of penetration, so they work out a lot more like Hesh than regular high explosive rounds. And traveling at 755, they are a little bit slower, but if you plan your shots just right and you use the high explosives inside this tank just right, you can basically take out any light tank that decides to come and be aggressive against you, even if it's a tier 10. So it holds up extremely well inside the matchmaking. Now I do have a replay for you guys today, so let's go ahead and jump right into that. So the armor inside of the uh, a Gallon Hawk 30, well, uh, th there's a reason why we skipped it. Your front plate on your turret is 30 millimeters. Your gun, however, is 35, but uh, yeah, you know, uh, not, not enough to really uh, go in detail about. So Live Oaks, I really like Live Oaks. This is a good map. Now, the reason why I chose this replay is because we are bottom tier. You know, I, I don't want to show my top tier replays. I don't want to go over my, my best matches. Like, I, I just want to give you my experience inside these tanks and, you know, ways to maneuver in them, uh, positions and maps. Live Oaks inside light tanks, I really like to take that center position just to scout out in the left and the right side. In my opinion, that's one of the strongest positions to get because heading down the G line, you can spot all the way up in the C. And with a good enough crew, your concealment is just fantastic and through the roof. Um, speaking of which, uh, it's been a minute since I've gone over this. If you look at the map at the bottom right, you'll see the uh, blue triangle uh, that goes out past, you know, that dotted line around your tank, the circle. That dotted circle is actually your concealment. That is your effective concealment. Now, just because it's your effective concealment at, let's say, the .27 base, mine's been amplified with my crew that I have on it and the premium consumable and everything else that I'm using. But it's kind of like a safety net. You know, you can, you can fire beyond your safety net, but if you fire inside your safety net, your chances of getting spotted are like 90%, depending on if you're behind bushes or not. And then you have your view range, which is that blue triangle that's in front of your tank each time you're facing out. So you see this position that we're at, let's say here, middle of G, we can see all the way out to um, B8, all the way down to the very edge of that line. Now, Live Oaks, there, there's a lot of spots to go to. Uh, G line for me inside of light tanks, I, I just love it a lot. If I'm inside of a heavy, I like to take the bottom path going along K and then heading up to J8 cutting under the bridge, letting my teammates handle the top section, and then pushing all the way up to about E9. And missing a couple of shots against that T-57 Heavy. That first round would have been nice if it would have landed. Second round hits him for 244. The alpha damage on this gun, I actually really like it. It's a pretty solid 90 millimeter with 240 base damage. Now, we do have under a 7 second reload. So, you can get some DPM out. So, 6.67. And keep in mind, that is with 100% train crew. We are not running a gun rammer on this setup just because, well, I prefer the accuracy on the move. Plus, if you're trying to get out DPM inside of a light tank, uh, there's something wrong. And AT-15 off to our right. Only three tank destroyers in this lobby. It's it's very heavy dominant. And my plan is just to keep everybody out in the center spotted. It would have been nice if my teammates would have been firing some of the targets I've been spotting out. But the tank destroyers in the back, they're a little bit more focused around the zero line than they are the C line. Which makes sense because if you allow the zero line to push over then the entire back's going to fall. And for what I'm doing is, is, I'm just trying to get as many shots as I can in. Now, being bottom tier, uh, one thing that I absolutely love about light tanks, whenever I'm playing a light tank, I actually don't care what tier I end up in. And that's because my play style is not going to change. So, for instance, my T-92, the American Tier 8 light tank, 
I don't mind if I'm versing tier 10s or if I'm versing tier 6s, because either way, I'm still going to be aggressive trying to get into positions. I'm still going to be trying to get to the spots I really like to get to for spotting and assisting and everything else. So primarily light tanks, if you play them correctly, uh, you can make the biggest difference inside of every single match. Or, you know, you could get shot out pretty early. In tier 10s though, don't expect to, you know, go head to head against a tier 10 light or tier 10 medium. Because they're just going to out DPM you. So primarily, there is a little bit of strategy involved as the tiers go up. But... Primarily, the play styles are usually the same. Quick, aggressive. The Agel, um, I treat this more like how I treat my Leopard 1. A little bit more aggressive. I do rely on the view range for the spotting and everything else to be going off. But Leopard 1 hits for 400. The Agel only hits for like 250. So it can't be as aggressive. But still a fun tank. Now, it's Thanksgiving. I hope you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Spend time with your family. Uh, take a break off tanks. I know I am. Uh, I probably will be putting up a stream later today once this video is uploaded. So if you guys want to check that out, just tune in. Other than that, I'm going to be stuffing my face with stuffing later tonight. So... Uh, down in the comment section, uh, I want to know what your guys' favorite Thanksgiving food is. Like, what, what is the one thing you guys can't stand not having on Thanksgiving? Mine's got to be stuffing. I absolutely love stuffing, and I don't know why. So, jumping back into the replay here. I mean, yeah, Thanksgiving. Uh, I'm excited. I don't know about you guys, but yeah. <laughs> Falling back on the map here. Just trying to keep the center as spotted out as I possibly can. Trying to prevent aggression. And may maybe try and get a few shots to be coming my way. And with the top speed that this tank has, you can rush into positions and just hold them down pretty well. The accuracy of the gun, 0.36 gun dispersion, it is a little bit high, but running vertical stabilizers will help you counteract that and allow you to take long range shot pretty easily. Against this M103... He's just trying to reset the cap as much as he can, but we've so far put three rounds into him, punishing him for a pretty good amount of damage. About, I'd say, 780. Now, we're up to 3,000 damage, 825 spot assist, and this is against majority tier 10s. I, yes, we have been taking on most of the tier 8s, and that's because... They're not rushing up into the fight. They usually like to stick more in the background, which allowed us to get a lot of side shots. Now, premium rounds, I do load quite a few of them, but what I like to do with my ammunition is getting it to where the average amount of rounds I fire off in a single match. So, what is the average you fire before you usually get knocked out of a match. For me inside my Agel, um, I gave myself that comfortable range of 25. Now, premium rounds, um, even if I, you know, let's say if I have 100% survival rate inside of a tank and I go through all my ammo, I'm still going to want to load, you know, at least 10 premium rounds in, let's say, my OE5, for example. And that's just because, you know, you go up against a mouse or you go up against, let's say, uh, a Type 5. Um, 258 armor pin is not enough to go through them. So sometimes premium ammunition is required. And always keeping a little bit on you, but not overdoing it, is just enough. Now this match, you know, we, we weren't top tier. But we tried making as big of a difference that we possibly could. And the Agel is just one of those tanks that, well for me, it stands up and it holds on strong. Even though it has no armor. Using concealment, view range, and everything else, it's just a phenomenal tank. It's extremely hard to beat. Well, would I recommend you guys to get this tank? It's been about a year since it was released. But yeah, I'd say if you guys are looking to get the Agel or the Hawk 30, 
It is a great crew trainer. It is a very solid scout. And it can be, in my opinion, one of the more competitive tier 8s in the game. So, I'd say jump out and go get your hands on it. Other than that, you guys have a great day and enjoy your Thanksgiving. Have a good one.